What's going on? Raven Ritual 666 back from the dead with another Diablo 4 build guide. Today I am super excited to bring to you my new Vox Lightning build. Now this is a variant on a Chain Lightning build using the new Vox Omnium staff. Pretty much we've built this guide around the way that the Vox Omnium works. Uh, stay tuned for some of the different variations that we've set up to get the Vox Omnium staff absolutely cranking into the end game. So, starting with the new unique staff, the Vox Omnium. How does it work? Well, I have a link down there in the description of a video on my overall thoughts of the Vox Omnium staff, like where I think it sits as a new unique in the game. Now, it is fun, so I really wanted to try to center a build around this staff to, staff to make it viable in the end game. So, my initial testing was, the one thing I like that it can do is it can cast a free Frostbolt, which means I can get my fourth stack of Tau Rashes. So using that, the Andarials, okay, I kind of came together with a build that allowed me to free up some changes in my Paragon, allowed me to free up some changes in my skill tree uh, to play a bit of a different variant on the Chain Lightning. Now, I played this build since day one of season five. I've been doing the Vox Lightning build this entire time. It has been great for leveling. Uh, it has been good for the mid to end tier game and has been uh, really good for the end game. It is viable. So stay tuned for when I go through the gear around some of the different variations you might run depending on where you're at in your journey. If you're on that push to like 90 to 100 or if you're trying to do Infernal or Hordes tier rates or, or pushing the pits. Uh, it's such a fun stuff to play with. Um, so let's get into it. So, before I get into the skill tree, you can see that this build is absolutely cocking. Like, I mean, look at the pure damage. Uh, we have got infinite mana. It's super fun to play. Uh, a bit about the skill combination is you want to run, initially, your unstable currents. Uh, you're going to pop your ice armor, which just infinitely is off cooldown all the time. Um, you're going to get your conjurations up. Um, by casting Lightning Spear, you got to teleport for the DR when you can, and you're just going to keep rinsing and repeating that, right? Like, if you've got something off cooldown, which you're about to get Ice Armor, you pop that, you get your 4-stack of Tau Rashes, it's almost infinitely up. If you're ever in a spot of trouble, that's when you hit your Flame Shield. Uh, but you can just see, we are constantly procking everything. Now, what I really love is how we've been able to incorporate Spark as a basic skill to get additional chains. So every time I cast a cooldown, of a lightning skill like my ultimate unstable currents or again uh, my teleport here or lightning spear i'm actually getting a ton of additional chains which is super super cool and what makes this fun uh, if i cast my ice armor okay i'm not getting the chains of spark now but i'm getting those procs again from the tower rasher so let's have a little bit of a look at the skill tree so starting with it you will see it's a little bit different. We're not running any points in a fireball because the Fox Omnium gives us basics. For leveling, I do actually suggest you put one, two, three points and go into flickering fireball because if you don't have uh, the right aspects to have infinite mana and you don't have an Andarils, you are going to be like very mana heavy with Chain Lightning and it's kind of nice to get that, especially once they pierce through enemies. So we are going a point in the spot one through into Enhanced Spark because it has a chance to chain to a three additional enemies along with what Chain Lightning's doing. And then uh, we're getting some additive crit chance, which is just kind of nice to have. You will see it get a flat boost um, once you are absolutely casting. So next, uh, we're going to run down. Uh, we're just going to pick up one point into Devastation, three points into Elemental Dominance for the extra core skill damage as a Chain Lightning build. You want to put all your points into Chain Lightning, you want to go down into each time it bounces, you deal 10% increased damage. Uh, we're getting 3 points into Potent Warning from our gear that we don't need. 1 point into Flame Shield. 1 point of Teleport through to Shimmering Teleport because we need that damage reduction, especially for high tier. Uh, just 1 into Elemental Attunement, uh, just for a chance to reset one of your defensive skills. 3 into Glass Cannon. You, you probably don't want to go too high in the Glass Cannon because uh, this season... You can potentially die if you have too many points in a glass cannon. So uh, watch it. This space. If you're fighting, you're like super squishy and you're dying. Actually, take the points out of glass cannon, uh, and you could put them uh, somewhere where you could need them, like align the elements, uh, more lucky hit chance to reduce your cooldowns, or even into some mana regen if you desperately need it with fiery surge or 
uh, invigorating conduits. So kind of play to your liking. Now most chain lightning builds are running mystical ice armor because you periodically chill enemies for 20% and they are running the extra damage uh, off a lot of your permafrost and hoarfrost and frigid breeze and icy touch. But we're not going to do that. You saw how my ice armor was almost on infinite cooldown. So while I'm chaining and we're spending a lot of mana on this build, my ice armor's off cooldown, my ice armor's off cooldown. That's how I can stay in an infinite barrier for that survivability for endgame. So that is super nice to have uh, and why I love this build. Uh, we are going to pick up Lightning Spear and go down to Invoke Lightning Spear. Uh, we really need that um, extra stuns because we are playing Devouring Blaze and we are getting a lot of extra damage uh, when enemies are stunned. So, three points into Conjuration Mastery. My amulet is not yet perfect and we're still cooking with fire. Uh, ideally on your amulet you want Conjuration Mastery and Devouring Blaze. I've spent so many millions of gold trying to get my Conjuration Mastery. I don't have it yet, but I will soon. Um, but if you can get, you know, six to seven ranks in Conjuration Mastery, your damage is going to go through the roof. So you're probably better with Conjuration Mastery as your key passive on your amulet rather than Devouring Blaze, but I'll talk through that once we look at the gear of why. Just one point align the elements. Uh, three in a mana shield for the DR. Three in a protection because we really need that barrier. The barrier is super important. It's how we can survive. Uh, we go three into the barrier duration. Um, you know, it's nice to have that survivability, especially while leveling. One here into Inner Flames. Uh, I've got the bonus four ranks uh, into Devouring Plays. So my crit damage is very, very nice. It's why we're running Firebolt as our enchantment. Um, especially with our Flame Fleet Feeder Glyph. And our Paragon node, uh, it, it's very awesome to get this extra damage buff. For leveling, however, um, until you get into the third Paragon board and you can get Flame Feeder and the buffs from it, you are actually better to put uh, a couple of points maybe out of um, Shocking Impact or out of probably Convulsions and Electrocution. You don't need that. Take those points out there, at least put one in a fireball, and run fireball. You are going to get uh, really fast AoE clears, especially through Hell Ties, especially through Nightmare Dungeons. Uh, fireball is very, very nice to have. But once you've got that Paragon board open for Flame Feeder, you're definitely better off to run Firebolt for the extra DR, the extra damage. And uh, again, with um, your Devouring Blaze, you're going to get those, those extra massive crit damage, which is nice. Uh, one point in the Static Discharge, three into Shocking Impact. Like, the damage buff on Shocking Impact is really nice this season. Look at that, up to 136,000. It actually stacks once I'm chaining. Like, if I watch me chain lightning and quickly come to my skills, that goes up to, like, 270 or, or 370,000. I can't remember. But if you are leveling and you don't have uh, the right aspects yet, uh, you are better off to go into Invigorating Conduit. Um, to, every time you absorb the mana, you get your energy back. But for endgame... Better for shocking impact. Come down, we go three points into uh, unstable currents. I potentially don't need that third point anymore, and could reallocate that. But um, when I do play the variant with crackling energy, it's nice to have. Uh, just you can rinse and repeat this if you're running um, Orange Herald. Uh, one point into coursing currents. Th three points into a DR. You really need this for the end game. For leveling, you desperately don't. So if you don't have the right aspects to infinitely chain. Take these points out of here. Go into killing a burning enemy. Gives you mana regen. Run Firebolt. And run Invigorating Conduit. You will have a much better time with your mana regen. And then finally, uh, we're going to go into Veer's Mastery. It's just absolutely amazing this season for single target damage. Uh, just for extra DR. It is super cool. So taking a look at our gear, this is where the build really comes together. Now, there are quite a few iterations of what you can use to still set this up. But firstly, the Vox Omnium. Now, the two most important stats is one is non-physical damage. Like, it is a huge damage buff overall. It's what allows us to set up our Paragon our way. Uh, the Intelligence is absolutely fantastic. But the reason why this build works so good for Chain Lightning compared to a, a single hand is... Normally, if you swap to a two-hander, you are losing so much attack speed. 
But you can see right here, I've got 42% core attack speed. That's without it masterworked all the way. And that's without it being GA. So the attack speed is super good just by running the Vox Omnium. Um, again, the intelligence on the two hand is awesome and, and the non-physical damage. So because we run the Vox Omnium, we can get our extra stack of um, Frostbolt, which means we've got our four stacks of Tower Rashes when we're running Andarials and with our current setup. So looking at our skills, realistically, you, firstly, you just want to be running um, Flame Shield, Unstable Currents, you want to run um, Ice Armor, you want to run Chain Lightning, Teleport, and you want to run your Lightning Spear. And then for your enchantments, Firebolt and Chain Lightning. So then, looking back across at our gear, how do we have infinite mana? Well, you've probably seen this before. It's not too different to another Chain Lightning build, but it's Andariel's Visage, which gives you that massive life on hand, along with the Starlight Necklace. Now, if you don't have an Andariel's Visage, you can still play this build, and you can still have a really good time. However, you might want to change the aspect on your necklace. You're not going to get the life on hand, which is going to infinitely regen your mana, because that's what Starlight does. Every time you gain 55 of your primary resource and you heal, uh, or your primary resource you, of your life, you heal. So that with Andariel's just is what gives you like infinite life and infinite mana. But you want to re run Recharging Loop on your amulet, because every time your Chain Lightning bounces, which is bouncing all the time, you're getting energy back which is very, very nice to have. So if you don't have Andariels, it's okay. You could run a helmet like this is what I ran earlier with Intelligence, Max Life and Armor. Um, that's perfectly fine. If not, uh, Intelligence, Max Life, um, you could get a cooldown of on Lightning Spear if, if you want to, to reach that faster. Um, lucky Hit, Chance to Stun, or Lucky Hit, Chance to Freeze are the best in slot for your tempers, whether you're running a helmet, a chest piece, boots, or gloves. And I'll explain why, especially once we're in the Paragon board. So, and Darius, best in slot. If not, you could run a Helm and, you know, for an aspect, uh, just run Undying because it's very nice to have some form of passive health regen. Uh, we are super tanky in the end game, especially thanks to Andarials for how much life we get. But Undying will kind of carry you if you are leveling. Best in slot for your chest piece is definitely Tyrrells. Like after testing, um, I smoked a quick Zeer in between there. And it is definitely thanks to Tyrrells. Um, it is very nice to have. But if you don't, I have two other chest pieces that I run. I have one that um, I have total armor for to help reach the armor cap. And if I'm running one of my other ones, which is either Max Life, Mana Per Second or Armor. The Mana Per Second one was what I was using when I was leveling before Starlight and Andarials. So if you are leveling and you're struggling with mana or you don't quite have the perfect gear, put mana per second on your chest piece. You'll have a much better time, especially if it's GA and you can masterwork it. Best in slot will be lucky hit, chance to stun. Ideally on all any piece of gear that you have that is not a unique. Just because when we are going into our Paragon board and we look at our control glyph... Um, you deal 10% increased damage to slowed or chilled enemies, or instead 20% increased damage to stunned or frozen. And that's 20% multiplicative, so ideally, if you're going to have a lucky hit, you want it either to be a stun or frozen, and that is why we run that on our gear. So, Tyrael's best in slot, if not, uh, if you're struggling with your cooldowns, um, you can chuck on a chest like this, with plus 3 to defensive skills. Um, this is kind of where we're going to get our armor from. Uh, intelligence is good. Max life is good. Total armor is good. Um, those types of things. Uh, again, if you're struggling with mana regen because you don't have infinite mana yet, put mana per second on and then use your chance as a defensive piece. I kind of like casting ice armor makes you unstoppable for the DR because you don't have the DR from materials. Otherwise, you could run Orange Herald if you're already at, like, good for armor cap and, and you, you feel like you're pretty tanky, to instantly reset your unstable currents. But best in slot is going to be Terrials. Now, I run Fists of Fate because I got a really good pair with a 290%. Now, if you probably don't get 250, 260% on your aspect and you get one of those awful rolls on attack speed, crit chance, or lucky hit, it might not be best in slot. You are going to be better off to run... Um, Bone Weave Gauntlets. Oh, sorry. You want to be running, um, ideally, not Stormswell, uh, but you want to be running 
the aspect uh, that uh, every time your ice planes are active, you get your 30% multiplicative damage uh, to vulnerable enemies. So the aspect of the shredding blade, that is what you want to run. I haven't put it on there because clearly my fist of fate are doing more damage. But again, crit chance you'd want. Um, intelligence ranks to chain lightning or crit chance if you don't have the armor that you need off your chest piece. Armor, chain lightning. Chain lightning is probably best in slot. You can see I've got a GA pair, but I don't really play with them. Um, if you are going to temper them, you want lucky hit chance to stun again. If you don't get lucky hit chance to stun, you want lucky hit chance to freeze for the bonus 20% multiplicative damage from our Paragon. And then crit damage. Crit damage is best in slot uh, for gloves and amulet. Now, you're going to run Axial Conduit. Uh, resource Gen was what I was prioritizing while I was leveling because I was kind of struggling for my Resource Gen. However, now um, I'm going to reset this and I'm going to focus on Ranks to Chain Lightning and Chance for Chain Lightning Projectiles to cast twice. I want the extra damage. I've got GA on the damage reduction of the Resource Gen. That's perfect. And again, the higher the aspect, the better. The more damage you're going to get from those massive explosions. So boots, if you're running the Tyrials, you just want legendary boots. Attacks reduce if aids cooldown is fine. Uh, you can also have, you know, dodge chance or movement speed after. It doesn't really matter. But what is important that you put um, aspect of the orange herald on there. Whether you want movement speed, whether you want teleport cooldown reduction, that's okay. But for your lucky hit, you want chance to stun or chance to freeze for that bonus 20% multiplicative damage. Ideally, Intelligence, Max Life, and Armor. Um, if these were perfect, I'd probably prefer Intelligence, Movement Speed, and Armor. Would be best in slot, but I didn't get the Movement Speed. And I just doubled up on the Armor so that I've reached my Armor Cap. So, the Amulet. I don't even have my perfect Amulet. Uh, for my Amulet, I've got the GA Devouring Blaze, which is amazing. Crit Chance, which is next best in slot. The third best in slot, what you really want, is Conjuration Mastery. Conjuration Mastery is going to give you a massive damage boost once you cast your two Lightning Spears. Um, and then you've got your Unstable Currents up. So, it is very hard to get. So, if you can either get Crit Chance, Devouring Blaze, and Intelligence. Or Crit Chance, Conjuration Mastery, Intelligence. If you don't get your Armor Cap, uh, you could roll Total Armor. Um, but, ideally... Best in slot, crit chance, conjuration mastery, devouring blaze. For your tempers, you want to run unstable currents because that's how we get our cooldown reduction right down, and then crit damage as well. Um, I have recourse re reduction. It was really nice while I was leveling, but I'm really looking for an upgrade. Now, ring of starless, best in slot. Uh, you want to temper, uh, master work the crit chance and core skills. We, we seem to have enough attack speed. That's okay. If you don't have ring of starless, it's okay. And you have... Starlight, uh, you want to run recharging aspect. Recharging is very nice. Uh, if you don't have a good recharging, you could also run the Umbral. Umbral Ring is very good with all the lucky hit to apply elements while we're mobbing, but Umbral just does nothing on the boss, right? You're not applying stuns unless it's a spirit uh, caller and you've got multiple adds and you can stun them consistently to get your energy back. But yeah, Starlight Necklace uh, is your best in slot with your Andarial, so you have infinite mana. And then if you don't have Ring of Starless, I would put anything for damage on. Maybe Shredding Blades, Conceited, you could put on if you need the damage. Or uh, depending on what you're running on your gloves. Uh, Tower Rash is, of course, super important. Non-physical damage and cooldown reduction. It's going to be your best to, to Masterwork. Uh, as you can see, mine's not even close to perfect. Into the Paragon board. This is my unique Paragon board setup. Um, I tested this in the PTR and I've been working on this for the last couple of weeks. Uh, in the starter board, we're going to come up. We're going to follow this. Again, the whole build guide will be in the descriptions. Uh, we're going to run charged uh, for the crackling enemy en energy damage. Uh, again, that's why we are running unstable currents. Come up and pick a lot of the extra damage up around here. Uh, you definitely want static surge because uh, it's how you can apply vulnerable. It's such an awesome way to get vulnerable on all your enemies, especially how often chain lightning hits. Uh, into here, we're getting control. Like we kept saying, while we were applying the lucky hit chance to stun or freeze, we're getting that multiplicative damage. It's super nice. And a flat 80% damage to crowd control enemies works very nice with Devouring Blaze. Into the third board, when you come down here, uh, you're going to pick up a little bit of extra damage to burning enemies and elites. Uh, we're going to run Flame Feeder. 
for the bonus damage to burning enemies. Works very nice while we're running the Firebolt Enchant. Uh, and then we get the 20% bonus damage to burning enemies. Uh, we're getting the 10% damage reduction from burning enemies. Every time Chain Line is hitting something, it's like boom, 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 We are getting the DR and the bonus damage. Uh, and they are just burning. So very, very nice to have. Down here, a little bit more non-physical damage. Because this is kind of a non-physical damage build. Uh, resistance all elements. I probably can drop that now and chuck those couple points elsewhere. But we'll look at that later. Uh, we're going to run Elementalist. Again, more non-physical damage. Very, very nice to have. Plus the bonus with Fire, Cold, and Lightning is absolutely amazing. Stacking them consistently, which we are doing with our Vox Omnium. Super, super cool to have. Uh, more non-fizzy damage. Down in here, Exploit. We need the Vulnerable damage. We don't really have too much else. Uh, we want to pick up the Vulnerable damage in here. Uh, same as Frigid Fate. Uh, we're getting a, a current bonus of 60% multiplicative damage to Vulnerable. So this is such an important Legendary node to have. And then... Uh, cold resistance. We just kind of want that for the intelligence. Uh, but the m main point is we want to pick up these uh, extra vulnerable damage here. So then we come across. Uh, we're going to shoot into our next board uh, where we're going to pick up destruction. We get the bonus 114% crit damage, which is amazing. Conjuration damage, which is just kind of cool. Finally, up into our unleash node. And this is something I'm still testing to play with. However, I like the bonus damage to the lightning here, which is kind of nice to have. This was super important while leveling. I'm not sure it's as important now, but we still get an 8% multiplicative damage increase when we're spending 50 mana, and we are spending 50 mana all the time. Okay, that is going to be all for the build guide. Thank you, guys. I'm Raven Ritual 666 You'll find me live on Twitch um, on Thursdays, Saturday afternoons. Please, come give me a follow. It's absolutely free. Um, on Twitch. Uh, if you want to check out more of the build, you want to ask me any questions, again, any comments, I try to respond to all of them to help you out with this build guide. But this is my Vox Lightning build. It's just a super fun way to play the build this season. I, I hope you like it and, and see, you know, there are still amazing variations uh, of uh, existing meta builds that uh, are still super viable in the end game. Remember guys, please subscribe to my channel. It is absolutely free. It doesn't cost anything. It really helps go to support me. Um, I appreciate every one of you that have made it this far in the video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.